everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I thought we'd talk about some major app updates for the week of November 3rd, 2023. It's been a while since I've actually covered app updates. Many of you have actually been asking me to bring them back, so I thought we'd talk about a few of them. Now, the first one has to do with Shazam. This was updated last week, and they actually brought the concert section. This is a new feature that shows you different concerts in your area, shows you things for you based on your location, and also different artists that you follow. You can also find concerts here as well. So if you want to check that out, it's available now if you're using the Shazam app. If you're using Apple Wallet, this was updated last week also. Within Wallet, you can now set up Apple Pay Later. So if you want to make installment payments to maybe purchase something, you'll see it says pay for purchases in four interest-free payments every two weeks, available online and in apps where Apple Pay is accepted. That's available now in specific locations. So if you want to set that up, you can do that, and then you'll have interest-free options for a little while anyway. If you use Apple Fitness Plus or you've wanted to use it, but you've already got a subscription to Anytime Fitness, gyms, Apple is actually partnered to make Apple Fitness Plus free to Anytime Fitness subscribers. So the partnership will actually go live on December 1st and will also integrate Anytime Fitness directly into the app as well, supposedly. So you can actually use this along with different things within the gym. You can pair your Apple Watch maybe to different devices and track your different workouts that way. As far as games this week, well, Resident Evil Village released for iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max along with M1 and M2 compatible iPads. This is a new game that utilizes a lot of the processor and is the first third party game that actually is a triple A game to come to the iPhone. So you could plug this in via USB C to HDMI, play it on your TV with a controller, whether that's PlayStation, Xbox, or Nintendo, and actually play this game. So that's available now if you haven't seen that already. And Apple also announced eight new arcade games coming very soon. So if you have the App Store and you subscribe to Apple Arcade, Arcade, even though they raised their prices recently, there's some new games they're releasing. They announced this in a press release, and you can see this here on November 1st. If we scroll down, you can see all of the different games that are coming soon, such as Not Words. If we scroll down, Football Manager 2024 Touch. Continue down, you'll see Downwell Plus, Delicious Miracle of Life Plus, Disney Dreamlight Valley Arcade Edition, as well as Sonic Dream Team. That's on December 5th and additional things such as Puzzle and Dragon Story, and more, Turmoil Plus. And then you can see all of the different release dates here. I'll link this in the description if you want to check it out. But a lot of nice things finally coming here after that price increase, though. Let me know if you're subscribing to Apple Arcade or Apple Fitness Plus in the comments below. A couple Google apps were updated this week. If we go over into Chrome, Chrome is something that you may or may not be using. But one thing I have noticed is on iOS, it seems to use less power than Safari due to syncing issues I've been having. But basically, Chrome is just a reskinned version of the iOS. Safari app, as Apple doesn't allow custom code for their browsers on iOS. However, if we go into Chrome, you'll see the address bar is at the top. We now have the option to move it to the bottom. So if we go into our settings here, slide over, go to settings, wherever it is here, settings, and you'll see address bar. We can now switch this to the bottom if we want to. So we'll move it to the bottom. And now we have it at the bottom like Safari, which is something I actually prefer when using it on a phone anyway. Also, something else that's been updated by Google this week has to do with Google Maps. There's new Maps immersive views for routes and other AI features. This was actually released on October 26th, and when you're routing to some place, you can actually see sort of a flyover of your route. So as you go through, you can watch your route, see what it looks like, give you a general idea of that. Additionally, you've got different things with Google Lens to understand your surroundings. And then there's also more here with just more detailed maps updates for EV charging information and more. So be sure to check that out. I'll link this in the description as well. There's some really nice updates. I haven't seen it live on some of my specific routes, but let me know if you're seeing that in the comments below. X or Twitter has been updated this week with new themes for the icons here. You can see one right here. And if we go into it, and go under app icons. If you're a premium subscriber, you'll actually see we have some new ones to go along with either fall or sort of a space theme altogether. 
Additionally, they added an option for audio and video calls. Now this can be disabled. If somebody doesn't want you to call them, they can turn it off. But if we go into direct messages, you'll see here in the upper right, we have a little phone call icon. So you can tap on that, call the individual. If you want to do that directly from Twitter or X. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is threads. I'm curious how many people are actually using it. I've been using it a little bit more lately, but I'm not sure how many are, but according to Mark Zuckerberg, it's on track to have a billion people on it. Now they did bring a lot of people over from Instagram and Facebook. So let me know if it's something you're actively using. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Something I do use a lot is Telegram. Telegram got some updates as well, and I actually have a Telegram channel, and one of the things they've updated, they actually allow users to quote specific parts of messages when replying. So it looks a little different if we go into it, and within the server you can see people talking back and forth where it's been updated with a little bit of clarification as to the quotes. Users also now have the ability to customize link previews with media size, position, and selecting which link to preview. Additionally, if you're a Telegram premium subscriber, you can now customize the account color altogether and select an icon as well. So some nice little updates there. And we talk about different things with recent updates in that telegram channel and discord as well. So be sure to check that out. They're linked in the description. Now, WhatsApp is something that's used quite a bit by most people around the world, just not as much in the United States, but apparently they're working on passkey support. This is according to Aaron P613 on X, where they're working on passkey support to be able to log in. That's something that more and more apps and websites are adding, making it more convenient to log in for everyone. Additionally, future updates that are coming out as well, according to WA beta info is that they're working on features to send photos and videos as documents to preserve their original quality. That way you can actually send full quality video and photos. Maybe if someone wants to edit something, work on something, you'll have that option. Also going along with communication, WebEx is being updated. So it will soon let you take meetings on Apple TV and Apple watch. So you can take your meetings there, use it full screen on a TV if you want to do that, but it only supports the second and third gen Apple TV 4k. So that's something that's rolling out very soon if it hasn't already for many devices. So hopefully we'll see that. And if you use WebEx instead of zoom or something else that should be available. Netflix is updating their least expensive tier, which is ad supported. Netflix is actually making a change to reduce the number of ads if you're binge watching something. So maybe you're watching a series of shows back to back. It will sense that and actually reduce the amount of ads. This will actually start to take place in the beginning of 2024 though. NASA has released an app called spot the station that allows you to learn more about the international space station, but also helps you spot it throughout the day. It can use augmented reality or the maps that we have here that are interactive and you can learn more about it. However, if you're on iOS 17.2 betas, beware that it seems to crash when it tries to use augmented reality. So that's something that's more stable on iOS 17.1, but if you're on the beta, it doesn't seem to work right now, but it's something, if you want to check it out, it tells you how soon it will be until it actually is going overhead. The company rogue Amoeba makes a bunch of apps that I really enjoy using such as Piso for recording audio. However, audio hijack for Mac now has speech to text transcription using resources from OpenAI. So if you want to record through that and then maybe transcribe it, you now have the option to do that. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention is the journal app. There's a couple things that seem a little bit different about journal, the journal app itself, and maybe the action button interface as well. They don't seem like they fit into iOS 17 very well, maybe hinting at an update that actually changes the overall interface. This interface is very different for Apple. Typically we'd just have a menu to support maybe a flashlight or some of the new features within the action button. However, they did this odd interface, which is not like Apple at all. We're starting to see a different type of interface with the journal app as well. And many people think maybe iOS 18 actually will have some redesigned elements within it. So that's that's something that hopefully we see. It does look very different. And if you want to write a journal entry, of course, you have all these options with suggestions and more. Also, one other thing I wanted to mention is during the scary fast Apple event, Apple actually mentioned that the event was shot on iPhone, but they didn't mention that it was filmed and then shot on Final Cut Pro. Instead, it was edited with DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere. That's a little bit of a departure. Typically, Apple takes every opportunity to push their own software. So it makes me think maybe with the lack of updates, they're focusing on something else. Hopefully that's not the case, but it was a little bit odd in that event. And I don't think many people mentioned that. So I just thought I'd mention that and hopefully they update Final Cut Pro soon. 
with motion and more and bring new features and a lot of bug fixes. Let me know what you think about these weekly app updates. If I should continue it as a series or just do it when there's major ones, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, it will be linked in the description as always. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.